people, the, the main issue with having depression is that people very readily assume that it's the same as being sad. Um, which is complete bollocks. Complete utter bollocks. Like, it's nothing like that. I can tell you why it's nothing like that. If you think of depressed people, think of what they do. They drink a lot. Not on all of them, but to cope, they'll drink. They'll self harm. They'll, you know, take drugs or something. And end up nearly every single time in a very emotional and raw state. Very sad and down. Now, why do you think they do that? Like, do you think they just do it because they can? They have some compulsion in their brain that makes them want to do that because they do, they always know that they're going to be sad and that's going to make them feel worse. Or is it because the depression isn't the same as being sad, and that those those type of activities let them be in that emotion and be sad and not have this like zombie like state that is being depressed. Uh. That's not going in the video. Might be, might be now. I'm not sure. <laughs> God, I'm so fucking funny. Oh. Welcome today um, to the ASMR channel. You have a uh, greasy, stubbly faced Thomas here today to walk you through some ASMR triggers. And today I'm going to be triggering you with depression welcome to another video special oh a little too a little too close there a little video special today because i'm in my dressing gown showing a bit of a bit of old man hair there you see it growing Let's have a look at that yeah it's pretty gross i fucking hate it i wish it would be socially acceptable to just completely just get rid of it um that's one of the sides as well so it'd be really really itchy um because i've done that i've done that thing before and guys if you're thinking about shaving your body hair just 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 forget about it it's it's too much work just be hairy and live in your own filth you know what actually i'm gonna i'm gonna put a t-shirt on I'm, I'm not i'm not feeling that comfortable in this even though i put it on the video so i obviously do but i'm trying to make a i'm trying to make a narrative here just just, just give me it, please. I'm gonna go put a t-shirt on. How do you like the new t-shirt? It's new, and it's from Italy. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I've dragged this intro on forever because, to be honest, I'm having fun with it. What do you think of this? What do you think this is? No. It's not what you think it is. It's a massager. It's for my autism. And it's for fitness, because he's supposed to squeeze out that lactic acid out of your muscles. It's not for squeezing out poop. Um, don't know what you're thinking about, you dirty person. So today, the topic is... I'm trying to think of two topics that I'm going to talk about. I don't know which one to talk about now. I think the most relevant one would be... The difference between depression and sadness. I want to lay it down straight for all you people out there. Especially you people who don't have depression. Or maybe you do, but it's not too good. Or it's not, or not too good. I mean, I'm not saying it's good, but not, not too bad. That's the right word. That's the correct word. Um, it's not too bad. And you, you, think you, you kind of have a grasp on you know, what it's like to have depression. Especially those people out there who are very logical, maybe you've got autism, so you think logic is the best way to decide, dissect things, and I understand that completely. Um, I, I tend to do it with other people as well, but I always have to bring my attention back to myself, because I've got depression as well, and I don't always deal with it very well. Today, we're going to be exposing some stigmas, we're going to give you a bit of a lowdown, we're going to give it to you straight, not bent. Although that would be also be okay. Um, 
main issue here is that we've got the main issue, which is firstly people who don't have depression. They're illogical, they think they know what's going on and how to fix it and stuff, and so they're like, hey. Completely constructive thing here. Actually, I've had some real words, real word world examples of this where there's been someone who um, criticizes my way of dealing with depression. I'm not the most stable person when it comes to, you know, like if, if I'm having a particularly bad day, obviously I don't want to, I don't want to feel bad, so sometimes I will drink on my own, sometimes. Not a lot, but I do do that sometimes, and when I go to parties, like, I'll drink a lot more than I should. Um, nothing happens, like, I've never blacked out from drinking or anything, just got a bit hungover in the morning. And so, you know, I'm at the point is that there's this person who, you know, was, was criticising me and, and, you know, telling me that, look, if you're depressed, you know, you have to do this, you have to get your life in order, you have to wake up on time, go to work, do this, have a bit of fun, go to sleep. And that sounds all great, and I understand how that would work. But the thing is, is that people aren't computers, and although even autistic people are more like computers, you, would, you could say, we're not. We're very emotionally driven. Our logical brains are an extension of our emotional brains. The only reason for logical brains is so that we can weigh up perceived emotional inputs compared to the emotional input that we're having at the, at the present moment, which is our emotions. So, you know, like, you do a lot of hard work now, you feel bad, you feel bored, but you've got a little perceived thing of positive emotion of being happy and wealthy in the future because you've worked so hard and that's how it works. And it's not a separate thing. It's an extension of the emotional brain. When it comes to depression, there's a lot of theories on depression. Uh, it's to do with a, a lot to do with serotonin. Serotonin is a big, a big um, import. It's usually a deficiency in, in serotonin. It can be caused by anxiety. There's this, this thing called the, um, God, I hope I get it, adrenocortico loop structure system, something like that. There's three structures in the brain, one of which is, um, one of, like, produced the, the screen's gone off, one of which produces the, the um, cortisol and stuff that you get from anxiety, and that's supposed to reduce brain, you know, size and structure and connections in a certain region of the brain, and that's been implicated in depression, so... That's, that's what happens, so you know what depression is now. It is, is to do with chemicals, and everyone is chemicals, so you have to agree with that. If you don't, um, I'm probably not the best YouTuber to be watching right now. Um, I can't really. <laughs> people, the, the main issue with having depression is that people very readily assume that it's the same as being sad. Um, which is complete bollocks complete utter bollocks like it's nothing like that i can tell you why it's nothing like that if you think of depressed people think of what they do they drink a lot not on all of them but to cope they'll drink they'll self-harm they'll you know take drugs or something and end up nearly every single time in a very emotional and raw state very sad and down now, why do you think they do that? Like, do you think they just do it because they can? They have some compulsion in their brain that makes them want to do that because they do, they always know that they're gonna be sad and that's gonna make them feel worse. Or is it because the depression isn't the same as being sad, and that those those type of activities let them be in that emotion and be sad and not have this like zombie-like state that is being depressed. One of the other differences between being depressed and being sad is that sadness is, um, it comes in waves, really. The waves are very sharp. So if your emotions are very sharp, so you have waves of emotion. 
And when you when you're going through one of those waves of emotions, so if you're having a crying fit because you're sad about something which is completely natural and okay, you'll release a lot of negative emotion. And to compensate with that, your body will release a lot of positive emotions after that make you feel relaxed and make you feel reflective and positive on it. Taking that over to depression, depression is not like that. Depression is constant, constant sadness in very small doses that increases depending on the severity. And no matter what you can do, no matter what you do, unless it's drastic like drinking or partying or taking drugs or stuff, that emotion is just going to keep building up and you can't release it at all. You can't release it. Even if you're with someone that you care about a lot and you feel vulnerable with, depression will stop you from doing that. Because it makes you feel scared and it makes you feel... It doesn't, it doesn't make you feel good if you were to release your emotion with anybody, even yourself. Crying is extremely therapeutic and people who are depressed can't cry. They can't express the emotion that they have. Just think of the music, like metal, rock, all the, any kind of depressing music. You know, I listen to Joji music. If you haven't listened to them and you're depressed, get, give them a listen. Don't be playing it like the life track that I've been doing recently. Like, it doesn't help then, but it can give you a bit of, you know, sympathy and empathy and, and stuff. People make that type of music because... It sort of helps a little bit. It's like a little, it's a little release that they can have, which isn't drastic like some of the ways of dealing with depression that people have. When it comes to feeling depressed, it can be very easily compared to being feeling like a zombie. There's different types of depression. It can it can be different. You know, you can be bipolar. You can have periods of feeling good and periods of feeling bad. But in general, people who are depressed, they, they're they just in this state of pain. Just, just pain. Like, you can't even describe what it's like. You're just in a state of pain and your brain comes up with all these stupid thoughts and scenarios about things and ways of looking at things. That no matter how much you tell yourself they're not true, they still get to you. And they still get to you, even though you know they're not true. Like, so you can, you can think that your best friend hates you. You literally just could think that your best friend hates you, even though they're hanging out with you a lot. And they say that they like you. They say they're having a good time with you. You could still think that they hate you. And that's just, that's just how it works, because you, you become so vulnerable because of all this constant pain. People who have chronic conditions, but chronic pain conditions, develop depression because of it. Because it's similar, because you're just in a state of pain that you can't do anything about it. It doesn't matter, you try stuff and it doesn't matter what you do, you're still, you're still in pain. And there's just no way out of just feeling horrible about life and not enjoying life and not having fun. And even the stuff that you have fun with it doesn't do the same, it's, it's not the same, like, I suppose it can distract you, that's, that's usually good, people distract themselves from depression, but you don't feel good, you just feel less bad in general, there's very rare occasions where I would feel good, and it affects you because, you know, why would you want to do something if you're still going to feel bad even if you do it? There's no, like, reward for your brain to get. Well, I was the same before. There's no perceived reward. And that's why people who are depressed, they isolate themselves from people. Because they, they, they don't see the reward, the reward of talking to people, being high enough for them to... Being good enough and feeling good enough from it to warrant them talking to people. And there's other stuff, you know, there's feeling hopeless. When you, when you live with something for so long, 
you get used to it, like myself. I wasn't used to it when I was younger. That's why I did all this, this crazy stuff like suicide and self-harming and just frantically sprawling about and being crazy because you don't know what the hell you're supposed to do. And even going on for like two years, it's still a, it's still a long time for a child to cope with feeling like that and not knowing why and feeling like nobody really understands why you like this and they don't understand your point of view of being negative and they don't understand you and if you can imagine that but it's that most most of my life is just I can I can hardly remember any experiences prior to when I got depressed it's most most of my memorable life is just being in pain And it's bad. And it affects other people. It's just like, people who love you and they're around you and they're like, are you happy? And you can lie if you want, but you're not. You just, you obviously want to feel better because, you know, you, you enjoy them. And you love them and you want them around. But, especially with myself, like, I can't lie to people. And if people ask me if I'm happy, even if I'm in a really good situation with someone. I'm not. I'm not happy. There's very rare occasions where I am. There's, 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 it goes in cycles. Like through the year it, it dips and it goes worse and it gets happy and it gets good and then it goes down and... It just adds to the, like the whole cyclical sort of experience. It's like... It's just at the point where it's like... Even when you're happy, you know that it's going to go go to shit. It's all going to go bad. And that's what it feels like. So it's just even when you're happy, you're like, okay, I'm going to enjoy this happiness. But there's still that little voice in the back of your head that knows that you're going to get depressed again. And before you say it, it's not self-defeating. Because I know that it's not the truth. It's just a little thing in the back of your head that makes you feel a certain way and it impacts you a lot and it, it stops you from getting motivation for stuff and it adds up. You know, if you miss stuff, it's gone off again. If you miss stuff at school or work or something like that, it builds up and it keeps building up and the motivation keeps dropping and your will to live keeps dropping and your pain increases until you just have a breakdown. And that's why people have breakdowns, because it's cumulative. That horrible feeling, that pain that you get, accumulates because it affects you in very minutely small ways that over time, it just sends you to shit. And, pardon my language, obviously, but it's, it's, it's the right word for it. There's no... There's no, there's no silver lining to it, it's just, that's what happens. And, um, it's not as simple as you're sad, do these things that are proven to make you not sad. Go do it. It's like, it's like telling, telling someone who's in chronic pain, who has extreme like, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, to go for a jog. Like... It'll help your arthritis, yeah, sure it will. But you'll be in a lot of pain, and you'll probably get panic attacks because it's so hard and you don't want to experience all that pain. And it's going to be shit for you. But you got to do it for a day, you got to run for a day, and then you got to do it the next day, and you're going to keep doing it, you got to keep hurting yourself, making it worse. Yeah, every day, just keep doing that, and then you'll be happy. It's like, for how long? For how long is it going to take? And is it, is it for certain? Is it sustainable? Is it going to work? It's like, it's probably not. When, when you're in the worst parts of depression, nothing, you can't, you can't do anything. Nothing has any perceived value over just trying to comfort yourself in the moment. Just laying in bed, going to sleep, sleeping in, 
that's the only thing that makes you feel good when you when you're severely depressed. Playing games, eating, not thinking about anything, trying to focus yourself on stuff that you like, playing games, you know, watching videos constantly, you know, all that kind of stuff. And people with depression, they do that. If you're watching this, you probably agree with me. You, you know what it's like. And you, you just keep doing it anyway because it's just the nature of it. But it's just because someone's in this, this state of mind. I'm speaking from someone who is depressed. I am depressed. But I also know what it's like to not be depressed. And I've got a lot of things that I tell myself because of that. It's another thing. It's people who they don't understand it very much. They see people who are depressed and people who have mental illness as not strong, as weak, as emotionally immature, like a kid. And they treat them like that. They patronize them. When they're trying to give advice, they'll patronize them because of it, because they don't understand. One of the one of the things that I've been thinking of recently is actually a little plug in for the in Instagram. At Thomas Henley TKD, uh, made a little post on depression, and um, I was I was comparing how life is for other people. So you'd think um, a gladiator fighting a lion. Okay, it's pretty hard. I can say it's it's pretty tough to you know fight a lion, and it's hard and it's gonna take a lot of work and training and yeah. What is life for someone who's de depressed? It's it's on a whole other level. It's like... It's like trying to fight, fight like a 10 foot tall demon that just mocks you. Like, you do some you do some training and stuff and then you throw a punch at it and it just sort of like dissolves into like a... like a mattress, you know, just like a cushion and you just like punch in a cushion and he just like pushes your head away into the dirt. That's... That's what it's like. It's just like it mocks you, and it's so enormously powerful that what can you do? And that's what it's like. With the line, you can do stuff, and you, you, there's a possibility of you getting through it. But I'm talking about feelings, of course. But you're faced with this impossible task. It seems impossible. And you've just got to keep doing it. That's what people keep telling you all the time. Just do this. You keep doing it. And people, as I said, look lucky was weak. But you could be, you could be like Hercules. And you still couldn't beat this massive demon. You could be this one of the strong, you could be the strongest person on the earth. As soon as you've got to fight that demon instead of that lion, there's 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 no there's no help in that. There's no way of defeating it. The only way that you can defeat it is by making that massive demon smaller. Not making yourself stronger, because like it doesn't matter how strong you are. Like I mean, the eyebrow really. It's one of the only things that I would you know try and big myself up on, but I'm an extremely strong person. I've dealt with a lot, a lot of shit and a lot of mental health issues and a lot of personal issues. A lot of stuff. And I can say that it doesn't matter how strong you are, it will get to you. And if, you th if you're thinking watching this that it, it wouldn't and you'd be different and you wouldn't feel the suicidal thoughts and you wouldn't want to hurt yourself for no reason. And you wouldn't want to drink so that you make yourself sad so that you can have an emotional release. Like, it's not, it's not like that. Get get over yourself. If you're depressed, I can tell you, you would you'd be surprised at how hard it is. You can't look down on people. Be they're trying. If you if you say if they say they're trying and you like you're pushing it to the side. Well, you you ever just thinking that they're lying? Why would they lie about something like that? They're, they're suffering a lot, and they can be strong, they can be 
powerful and they can have a lot of logic and you can have anything in their arsenal. But as soon as that demon is just a little bit too big, it just mocks them a little bit too much. There's no help. There's no help in it. It just takes time. He's going to meet you. It's this combination of luck, supplements, counselling, all those kind of stuff. It just shrinks the demon down a little bit. Distracting yourself, doing well at stuff, shrinks it down, shrinks it down. And as soon as you forget about it, it creeps back up on you. Not always. People, you can't escape from it. But for, for a lot of people out there, it's, it's, it's what it feels like. And depression is it's, it's not like sadness. Sadness is cathartic. Sadness is, is good. It's human. Being depressed is just... It's just um, some mental torture that's being put on you. And you have to endure it. And you have to endure people not understanding how much you're in pain. Just, there's no way of telling, is there? Whether people are overreacting or underreacting. But isn't it better just to assume that they're telling the truth? And that they are actually suffering that much. But yeah. Been a bit of a deep video. I think it's a good video. I'm quite proud of this one. I'm not doing that great, to be honest, guys. I'm trying my best. I'm pushing through it. I'm Asperger's Griff. Thomas Henley is going to push through it, and I know I am going to. It's just, it's incredibly hard. I'm going for a really tough period of depression, of anxiety, panic attacks in the morning, you know, just. Not being able to sleep, issues with eating, can't work, deadlines coming up, can't work on them, can't concentrate. Even if I do get myself up, just depression, it just gets in the way of your, your brain. You just lose all your energy and motivation for stuff and it's, it's just what I want to get out there and I want people to understand it. That there is a reason for all these like disability services for people who are depressed at uni and stuff, it's like. I suppose you could, you could argue that, you know, we're not suited for it, I guess. But if you think about a lot of the great minds out there, you think a lot of intellectuals aren't plagued with these kind of issues. Do you think they're not plagued with this? Do you think that's this? Intelligence, it goes, it goes with depression. It's usually, it's usually very highly correlated with it. So, is that bad? I don't know. We've got to have things in place in society. We've got to have people who understand and people who will make the effort to, to befriend people who are in a bad place and put themselves out there for the other person. And if, if someone who is depressed seems to be um, taking advantage of you or you feel like they're not appreciating you enough, you need to tell them. This thing is, one of the things is, is, is depression saps your energy, you know. So even a small amount of effort on your part for someone else can be massive for, for you to do that. But they, they might just see it as something small. And that's, yeah, that's a, one of the issues in communication. Obviously, it's a different video. Right. I'm going to end this soon, don't worry. Um, well, yeah, if, if anybody is, is, is going through depression out there, you know, just drop a comment, give, I'm not going to say like, what else, what's that going to do? You know, just drop, drop a comment. Tell me about yourself. Tell me what you're going through. I'll try and help if you need more. Go to my Facebook page, Asperger, at Asperger's Growth. Just drop us a message on there. I'll try and get to it. And obviously, if you, you're having trouble with it right now and you're having suicidal thoughts, get yourself onto a hotline and make sure that you, you put in place measures to protect yourself and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I hope this has helped people who are depressed. Hopefully, it can be a bit of a, you know, a mental break for you, considering that... You obviously put a lot of expectations on yourself to be able to deal with this. 
but you, you can't minimise the extent at which it's, it's a horrible disease. It is. It's not an easy disease. It's not one of those things that you can brush aside. It's you are, you're ill. And you have to recognise that. You have to take it into account with your actions and feel proud of yourself for making those efforts. It's really important. It is. For all you, for everybody else out there who's watching this who isn't depressed, it can be a bit hard hitting if you take me seriously. If you don't take me seriously, you can just, you know, add it into the whole understanding, the whole, oh, I understand it. Like, all you have to do is do this and you'll be fixed. Um, I hope I've caught, it's changed. If, if you're like that, then I've changed your mind. And if I haven't, maybe I've given you some more things to think about. Um, either way, any, any, anybody who's watching, thank you very much for watching my videos. If you haven't watched a video of my own before, and this is your first video, hello, how's it going? Get yourself on that subscribe button, click the little notification bell, and I'd, I'd really like to see you guys uh, commenting and, and getting involved in the community that I'm trying to build here. Um, I feel like it's going to be really good. I feel it's really positive. And yeah, give it a like if you like the video. I'd love a little like. Maybe let's try it. Let's try. I'm gonna do the little goal for likes. Yeah, let's do 25 likes. Let's get 25 likes on this video. <laughs> Apparently it helps exposure, so maybe it does work. I'd love a little like, thanks. That'd help. Well, anyway. Thank you for watching, man. Make sure if you like the video, make sure to subscribe, and if you like the video, make sure to like the video as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Scene.